a workshop with Michael Stillwater. Uh, and it was a very uh, interesting and exciting uh, experience to be a part of. So I say good morning and greetings to our virtual family in Facebook and to our other Zoom participants who are joining us here at the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living. We welcome you on this beautiful and gorgeous day, knowing that the light of love and the sunshine and the beauty of all that there is, is right where you are at whatever time you're doing this broadcast. And So we're continuing with our theme for the month of April, which is creativity. And today we're, we're dancing with the donkey. We're dancing with the donkey. Uh, just a reminder that creativity is who we are. It is that aspect of us that is never diminished. It is never tarnished. It never changes in any way, shape, form, or whatever. And so, before I really get into the talk, I want to uh, take this opportunity to um, acknowledge a friend and colleague, um, Dr. J. Scott Neal, who stepped off of the mortal plane last Sunday and moved into his next greater yet to be. And those of us who live in the Bay Area uh, in some way have been impacted and touched by Dr. J because he was uh, local in Fremont and uh, quite a inspirational uh, icon, I would say, within the movement of religious science. And so I wanna share just something with you that uh, Amber shared with us from the inspirational reading this morning for our virtual family. And this is my tribute to Dr. J. And it speaks to what we are talking about this month in creativity. He writes this in his book, The Power of Positive Purpose. Uh, in 2007, and I believe that this is the last book that he published. The title of this essay is That Which Creates, and I'm just reading in part. We each have the ability to develop the higher state of consciousness that is always within us. The great teachers have affirmed that each deserve the fulfilled, perfect development of the spirit in us as us, which is the nature of God, the only creator. How long does it take to accomplish this? Forever. And this is typical for me, from my memory of my interactions with Dr. J is uh, he would drop these little simple nuggets right in the middle of a, of a statement or a conversation and he would move on. And sometimes I wish that I had a pause button where I could pause him live and go back and sit with this little jewel. And this is really a little nugget. He asked, how long does it take to accomplish this? How long does it take to accomplish the awareness that we each are the nature of God, the only creator? And the simple answer is forever. And that's what we do on this daily journey. This is our call to be in that forever place of expanding. Ernest Holmes, our founder, talks about being open at the top. And I think this is an example of being open at the top. We are forever and ever expanding and learning more about ourselves and learning more about the true nature of spirit. And so we say farewell to Dr. J from this plane of expression, knowing that his essence and his energy is always with us. And so I'd like to offer a little overview for our talk today and for the expansion of the week. The creator itself informs, guides, and shines through all paths in unique ways that express in various forms. Last week, we began the celebration of Ramadan and we continue to experience the intersection of many spiritual paths this week beginning today with Palm Sunday, which is also the beginning of Holy Week. Metaphysically holy means spiritually whole, of unimpaired innocence, wholeness in spirit, mind and body. 
It is in this state of consciousness that we are aware of the all prevailing presence of spirit. Good Friday and Easter Sunday are just a few days away and Passover that is celebrated by our friends in the Jewish tradition uh, begins on Saturday, April the 16th. And so each one of these celebrations, those that I have mentioned as well as many others that are taking place are powerful tools that offer us the, the opportunity to honor the individual creative journeys and become ever more available to spirit. You know, one of the things I love about this teaching is its inclusivity of all faith traditions, recognizing that we share the same infinite light of wisdom as our Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, Taoists, Celts, indigenous peoples, Baha'is, pagans, and even atheists. We all share the same infinite light of creativity. And yet, there's a deeper call to expand this inclusivity, to include the recognition of this infinite light of wisdom in all to those who we may identify as others. And you've heard me speak about this before, about this whole concept and idea of othering. And othering is a practice of labeling and defining an individual or a group whose characteristics are not fitting with the norms of the social group. It is, an if, it is in effect that influences how people perceive and treat those who are perceived to be part of the in-group versus those who are being seen as part of the out-group. This is where duality comes into play. And we saw evidence of this big time uh, up real front and personal during the recent confirmations for uh, Justice Kentaji Brown Jackson, as she was going through the hearings for the nomination to the Supreme Court, and also the virile comments that are following. You know, it, it, sometimes I, I just have to sit back and, and wonder, are we all on the same planet? Are we all knowing, are we all remembering that we are expressions of the one infinite creative source? And if that creative source shows up in a different outer clothing, a different body suit, a different lifestyle, a different choice than what is quote unquote accepted by the norm, does that make that individual or does that make that group any less than? And so, I just invite us to identify those places where duality show up in our lives. And remember the invitation that we have from uh, writer Valerie Carrar, who in her book, See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love, talks about this idea of revolutionary love. And this is what I, submit to us this morning that as people of faith, as practicing the principles of spiritual living, as practicing the principles of the one creative intelligence, it is our call and our opportunity to practice revolutionary love. And she writes, revolutionary love is practiced in community. So it starts right here. It starts in our homes, it starts in our neighborhoods, it starts in our community groups. Each of us has a role to play at any given time. We can all be midwives in the time of great transition. Practicing revolutionary love influences our responses to the world of effect, where war, famine, immigration, and other things are occurring that are not congruent with our Centers for Spiritual Living global vision of a world that works for everyone right where they are. And so expanding on this a little bit further, I offer to you our science of mind point of view and some discussion points. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, writes in what we believe. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny. But we understand that the life we live is God. 
He also writes for us in the Science of Mind textbook, there is that within which partakes of the nature of the divine being. And since it partakes of the nature of the divine being, we are divine. That is a key point for us to remember that we are divine. No matter where we find ourselves, what circumstances we find ourselves in, we are divine. And when we recognize our own individual divinity, then we can celebrate the one infinite creative presence and power of everyone everywhere. Speaking of Palm Sunday, there's a little story that I read. Um, it was Palm Sunday, but because of a sore throat, five-year-old Johnny stayed home with a sitter. And when the family returned from church, they were carrying several palm fronds. And of course, Johnny asked, what are they? What are these? What are, what are they for? What are they for? And so his father said, people held them over Jesus's head as he walked by. Little Johnny in his um, spiciness, audacity, little, little five-year-old mode says, wouldn't you know it? The one day I don't go is the day he shows up. So Palm Sunday commemorates Jesus's donkey ride into Jerusalem. And Jerusalem means a place of habitation of peace, the place of habitation of peace. It is about our I am nature and knowing that peace is always present and it awaits our decision to enter into it. Peace is always present. It is always available to us and it waits our decision. It is always available and it awaits our decision to step into it. Rather than deny, fight with or abandon the donkey, Jesus rode on it above all of the donkey stuff. And we can use our imagination to fill in the blanks for all of the donkey stuff that still is around us. Metaphysically, the donkey is that part of us that is stubborn, untrainable, and undisciplined. Now, I know that doesn't apply to anyone that is sitting here with us in the congregation. It doesn't apply to anyone that is part of our virtual community. But I'm sure you have some aunties or some nephews or some cousins that this may apply to. However, the good news about the donkey is that it is also persistent and it can endure and travel the rocky and the broken roads. And this is where we all come back together. This is all where we all come back to the place of the heart, where we travel together in our persistence and our endurance, knowing that the light of love is always shining through us and as us. And so the invitation is to take time to dance with the donkey. This is our topic for today, to dance with the donkey. Palm Sunday requires life's, represents life's continuum. We have sacred moments of discovery and we also have dark nights of the soul. The valleys of death and desperation are not meant to be passed through and not lived in. It's like the story that is often told of that passage in the 23rd Psalm that says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I did not stop there to buy any real estate, to set up any sort of a permanent residence. I am walking through. And so these experiences are our opportunities to pass through them and not live in them. Palm Sunday shows us that the infinite creative potentiality the light within embodied in the physical form of Jesus and also in each one of us as mortal beings. Jesus in human form feels love and also pain. If we read the stories of the life of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, we see that he experienced pain and hurt and love just as we do in our daily lives. 
Jesus as the Christ, Jesus as Christ the divine, or the Christ consciousness as we refer to it, is that within each individual, which is universal wholeness. This light-filled intelligence can never be extinguished, it can never be hurt, and it can never be lost. The Christ within is always inviting us to weave our humanness with our divinity. This is where we bring duality back into oneness, where we weave in our humanness and our divinity, knowing that we are one. To dance with the donkey, to dance with spirit, we must dance with all of spirit, all of spirit, especially those parts of ourselves and our journey that challenges us to grow. Sometimes I'm, I'm reminded of a, of a story that I heard. Uh, there was a new minister that was called to a community as their senior pastor. And the selection committee had hired this individual because of his foresight, because of his dreams and because of his visions to have the community expand, which was what they said that they wanted to have. And so the first Sunday, the minister gets up and he delivers his sermon. And um, it's one of these call and response communities. So the community is really into the sermon, into his talk. And he says, now, in order to grow, we have to come together and be more unified. And so the response was, yeah, let the church grow, Rev. Let the church grow. Second Sunday, he delivers the same, same similar message about growth. It expands on other opportunities where there's a call for a greater volunteerism, a greater commitment to spiritual teachings and spiritual truths. And the response is, let the church grow, let the church grow, Rev, let the church grow. Third Sunday, a very similar theme, outlining the areas where the church can grow. The response was the same, let the church grow, Rev, let the church grow. The fourth Sunday, he gets down to the nitty gritty. And he says, okay, in order for all of this to occur, we have to expand our financial awareness and we have to expand our financial giving. The response this time was, let the church stay, Rev. Let the church stay. <laughs> and I know that we are not in that place here in this community. We recognize that in dancing with the spirit and accepting what is within us, we become free to dance with what is. The challenges and the issues that are part of this creative dance become the reasons to dance and not the reasons to give up. And I have a breaking news flash for you this morning. There will always be donkeys. There will always be donkeys. And so the next celebration that we intersect with this week is Passover. And Passover commemorates the Israelites' historic liberation from slavery in Egypt. Symbolically, Passover represents the passing over of an old state of consciousness into a new one. Rising in awareness, we transcend from the mortal to live from the I am. We are passing over from something old into something new. The creative journey of Palm Sunday and Passover means leaving the predictable to walk the road less traveled. And I remember reading the book by M. Scott Peck, The Road Less Traveled, which is this great spiritual teaching that invites us to create our own road to be that bold and audacious spirit within us to allow that to come forth as we create our own road. In the tradition of, Mar of Ramadan, Muslims honor this particular time, this holy season in their culture by fasting from food, fasting from gossiping, fasting from arguing or lying. It's a time for self-reflection. It's a time for spiritual growth and a time for moral excellence. Ultimately, fasting is gaining a greater, is gaining greater God consciousness, a state of the constant awareness of God. 
And so it is our opportunity to practice this doing Holy Week, to start doing Holy Week if we're not already doing so, and to expand this into our particular daily lifestyle. And that is to fast from judgment, fast from fear, fast from separation, and embrace the equality, the equity, and social justice that we choose loving awareness and that we keep our hearts open to creating and maintaining a world that truly does work for all. It takes a willingness to be a channel for spirit's creations. It takes faith to step out towards, toward, it takes faith to step forward into possibility, discovery, and newness. Whether we are creating a new way of being with people that we love, or there are innovations in science and, and in technology. Each one has a light within which seeks to shine in wonder and radiance. It takes courage and curiosity to explore our dreams and our uniqueness, our own individual uniqueness. We cultivate courage by developing our understanding of who and what we are as spiritual beings. We embrace our curiosity by connecting with others who are walking a journey of discovery and potential. And of course, we can resist, we can battle, and we can deny what is. Or we can surrender and dance with the donkey, remembering that what we resist persists, and it can be very exhausting, overwhelming, and extremely frustrating. Ask me how I know. Dancing with the donkey, resistance fades away. And what was our shadow blesses us and offers us the gifts of innovation, newness, wisdom, and resilience. We establish a discipline of mind which keeps us centered, aligned, and conscious of our oneness with the infinite spirit. And so wrapping all of this up, we are invited to be willing to be inspired, to grow through all of our donkiness. Sometimes it may be wild, and other times it may be as graceful as a life dancer. There will be a great choreography and order, and there will be chaos and creative confusion. And yet out of the chaos, the ashes, arise, the phoenix arises, and something new takes place. Keep dancing with the donkey and dance and bless every day. Keep dancing with, keep dancing your dance and bless the donkey. And this leads us to our personal application for the week. And I've invited our fabulous, phenomenal, outstanding tech team to place these in the, in the chat section for our Zoom family and also in the comment section on our Facebook page. And if you're viewing us by Zoom this morning, I invite you to save the chat so that you have these to refer back to during the week. And so the personal application for this week is in three parts. And the first is a question. Whom or what are the donkeys in your life? Whom or what are the donkeys in your life? Rather than tame them or make them conform to what you think they should be, do what they should do or ask. Ask yourself this question. If there are gifts to be found in the presence of these donkeys, oh, I'm glad this is on the board. Uh, if there are gifts to be found in the presence of the donkeys, and is there a deeper understanding that drives us into our own imagination? And our second point is, as we dance with the donkeys, remember that regardless of the appearances or the challenges, that peace is always present. This is the key to remember that peace is always present. And then to dance literally, turn on the music, Turn it up loud. Peace, give yourself permission to move. It's very freeing. Physical movement is very freeing. 
it loosens up those kinks and those knots that, um, that we get stuck in the place for a while. And so I invite us now to um, our weekly affirmation. Um, I will say it then that I will invite you to respond. I am an open, dazzling channel of inspiration and peace. And so let us say this together. I am an open, dazzling channel for inspiration and peace. And let us pray together. The prayer that I'm offering this morning is the Bodhisattva prayer for humanity. This comes out of, the, um, out of the Buddhist tradition. And this prayer is said to be performed each morning by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. And I thought it was just appropriate for where we are on this life journey. And so I invite you to listen to the words. May I be a guard for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles. And from the boundless monitude of, and for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening. Enduring like the earth and sky until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. We know that the true essence of the all prevailing presence is that which responds to this prayer and all of the prayers, responds to that place of the heart where we return to the oneness and our connection with source. Blessing all people, blessing all places where two or more are gathering in the name and nature of the one life. I know that everything is unfolding in divine right and perfect order. And for this and so much more, I am grateful. Releasing all of this into that law, which always says yes, I just allow it to be. And I invite us to affirm this together as we say, and so it is, and so it is. Thank you for your presence here with us. Um, and this is an opportunity to, that I remind us each week to take advantage of meeting with a spiritual practitioner, with a licensed uh, prayer counselor, with a, with a licensed minister. Um, and you know, again, this, this is another place where, where we operate from duality and it's an unconscious duality. We make the distinction between a licensed practitioner and a licensed minister. And there is no distinction. Because, because to become a minister, one is required to be a practitioner. And we're all, when we are practitioners for life. And so, let's, Woody, I'm, I'm looking at you because you're a newly licensed practitioner. And, and we have an opportunity to change some of this dialogue, to, 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 to eradicate some of this duality. But I do invite you to, to take the opportunity uh, to bring whatever cares and concerns that you have, as well as those items that are being celebrated. We enjoy speaking with you. We enjoy praying with you. We enjoy coaching with you in all aspects of life. And so in our, um, on our Facebook page, no, on, on our website is a listing of the practitioners and ministers here at the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living. In addition, uh, you may get prayer support from our World Ministry of Prayer. You may reach out to them online and that information is included on our website. And also uh, we partner with Silent Unity and there is a, uh, I think it's an 800 or an 866 number. You can do a Google search for Silent Unity and uh, speak with someone live uh, as part of their prayer community. And now is our opportunity to participate in 
another aspect of the divine flow, and it is the flow of abundance, the flow of our affirmation of all that shows up in our life in material form. And we have an affirmation that I invite us to now say together. I recognize the presence of God within as the source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything that I could desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And for those who are here in the sanctuary this morning, we have our giving box that is on the hospitality table. And I take this opportunity to acknowledge Andrea Round for the beautiful floral arrangement that is on the hospitality table. So as you leave your donation there, make sure that you appreciate the beautiful flowers that are, that are there for us. Also on our hospitality table is this month's Science of Mind magazine. Uh, the cost is $5 and we just invite you to put the $5 in the little container where the magazines are. And for those of you who are viewing online, there are opportunities to give. You may mail in your contributions to the center. The address is there. You may text to give and that phone number is there. And you may donate uh, online through our secure website, our secure portal. And so as we prepare to say good morning to our virtual family, I invite you to return next week and celebrate Easter Sunday with us. And our theme is create, reveal, release, and rise. Reveal, release, and rise. And so we say to our virtual community, thank you for joining us wherever you are. Know that you are loved. You are the light of the creative presence that is always within you, that is forever and ever expressing. Thank you and good day.